Hi, and welcome back to my channel where I continue to cover the Sidekick Dungeon Master set of tools provided by Tasha's Cauldron of Everything Source Module for Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. In this particular video, I will be creating an expert class sidekick, making use of the Fantasy Grounds Character Wizard to help me. I will also look at showing how to set up some of the initial features the sidekick will start with, so that they are essentially ready for use at level 1. Just remember that this process can really only be completed by the Dungeon Master when using Fantasy Grounds, but I suppose it is technically possible for a player to create one using the physical copy of the book. So with that, let's begin. Much like a player creates a character, the Dungeon Master can create a brand new expert class character using the character wizard. And you gain access to that by clicking on the PCs button here, which will pop open this video, which is showing all of my previous tutorial characters. And then click on this open character wizard button, which will bring up this window that we now have open. The sidekick will require you to make many of the choices a player makes when they're creating their characters. You will need to choose things like a race, or if you wish, select the custom lineage option, which I'll show you how to get to that in a moment. They will also require stats and a background, and finally, one of three choices of a given class. If you want to gain access to the custom lineage option, which currently is not listed here, you will need to go and open up the player's module. And if you just look for Tasha, you will see that the player's module is not loaded. Once that is loaded, you can then reopen the character wizard and you will see that the custom lineage feature is now there. I do not know if this will introduce any other issues during the creation process, but we'll find out when we go through and complete this process. And once all of that is done, you'll also need to add in their equipment and spells, if they require spells. Now, out of curiosity, I'm actually going to attempt to create this particular character with the custom lineage feature and see what happens. So I'm going to start by selecting the custom lineage. I'm going to make this a medium sized character. And I don't know what the expert has when it comes to their skills, if they're getting any. So let's just quickly pop open expert and scroll down here. All right, you gain proficiencies of five skills as your, of your choice, so it doesn't really matter which I choose. They will also require a background, so let's, I don't know why that was down there, potentially pop open if I'm creating an expert. That might make sense to go with possibly an acolyte, but we shall see. So if that's the case, I will want to avoid things like insight and religion. Okay, so let's see here. I'm going to give this character dark vision. I am also going to set this character up. Is there a quick build here? What are their saving throws? Dexterity, Intelligence, or Charisma. So I'm going to give this one Dexterity, the bonus for that. And then I'm going to give them, they already know Common, so let's say Orc for now. So you might be asking why I decided to make sure that my Dexterity was going to be the stat that gains the plus two bonus. Well, I took a quick glance at the features that we're going to be gaining as we level this particular character up. And there are several here that actually look like they might require the uh, dexterity ability score and may benefit from that particular modifier as a result. And I'm intentionally going at this a little bit blind without doing any particular advanced study, if you will, of all of these features so that I will run into the exact same problems that you might run into while creating these particular characters, just so that you can see what methods I use to actually work my way around those issues which means Acolyte may not be the best background that we want to choose. We may pop this open again and maybe go with potentially Spy or Criminal, maybe even Soldier, but we shall see. Let's continue on getting set up with our stats. 
So as before, you can click on this next button or you can just simply click on the stats button in order to actually get over to the stats window. And by default, Dungeons and Dragons will usually recommend going with a standard array when creating your stats. However, I'm not a fan of that particular method. It just, well, the stats aren't necessarily all that great. I generally like to use the dice roll because it gives you a wider variety of stats and you can actually sometimes end up with some stats that are quite above average in a lot of ways. Now in this particular case we've got a mix. We've got a few that are below average but we've got quite a few that are high and I might want to actually keep this so give me a moment I'm going to do a quick study over these particular stats and see if I want to keep this. So I have decided to keep these stats and I have moved them around and all I did was use these little arrows down here at the bottom to shift them back and forth. I've set the 9 in the intelligence and the charisma in the 8. Everything else is using a 15 or a 16. And as you can see, the plus 2 bonus that was applied to my dexterity is bringing up our dexterity to an 18. And everything else is pretty much staying as it was. Now at this point, I'm pretty much ready to select my class. But there's this Feats button here that has a red highlight. Because we used the custom lineage as the race that we have decided to create, we need, or get the ability I should say, not necessarily need, get the ability to choose a feat. I'm actually going to save this until the end. And the reason for that is I want to make sure that my class and my background are in place so that everything else is set and then I will come back and select a feat, if you will, that will match everything else that I have chosen. So let's go back to class. And what we want to do is we want to select the expert class here. And that sets all of that up when it comes to our initial selection for class. I then want to go through and select the background. Well, in this particular case, I want to take a look at some of these particular abilities here just to actually go through and figure out if there's anything here that would be beneficial to anything here. So I'm gaining something like a cunning action, uh, which allows you to disengage. Okay. A coordinated strike. All right. Inspiring help. So it seems like this could potentially be a blend of the rogue, the bard, and a couple of other things mixed in. So, thinking. Acolyte would not make sense. That makes more sense now that I think about it to something like the spellcaster. Outlander could work. Yeah, Outlander will work. So let's go with an Outlander. So I'm going to choose the Outlander background. And that's going to set up pretty much the option of the two skills that I have here, although they're not showing up yet. We'll see what actually comes through from that. I do get another language choice here. So I'm going to go with Undercommon. And we apparently acquire the ability to use a musical instrument, so I'm going to call select a lute. And those are the initial proficiencies. Now, you may have noticed that on this expert class, you gain proficiency in five skills of your choice. We didn't get the ability to choose them, so we'll have to go through and do that once the character itself is created. We'll also want to make sure that the athletics and the survival skill are also set. So let's continue on, and now let's jump over to our feats selection. So with the feats, if you want to make sure that you've actually got an idea as to what a feat does before you choose it, you might want to just quickly open up the feats button here and pop this window open. Then you can gain access to the features themselves. In this particular case, I'm actually going to choose Chef. And the reason I'm choosing Chef is because it's going to gain or give us a little bit of a quote unquote benefit for the party. A, I can increase my constitution or wisdom by a score of plus one. That has not happened yet, so we don't need to worry about that just yet. We'll do that after we get the character sheet created. You also gain proficiency with Cook's utensils if you don't already have it, 
and you have two options. During a short rest, you can create some food that if the party eats it and they spend a hit die, that particular individual will gain an additional 1d8 hit points as part of that process. And the treats themselves that you can cook after a long rest will last for a portion of the day and give you the ability to grant someone temporary hit points during combat if they eat one of these treats during a bonus action. So, I'm going to stick with that. I'm going to leave that here because we'll need to make the modification to the Wisdom for now. I'm also choosing it because it'll be an interesting feature to set up for a starting character. Now, before I continue, I need to make sure that I've set up the inventory. And I'm going to select something that we don't start. So we don't have a complete list of starting equipment. What we do have is a little bit of an idea as to what we could potentially make use of. So I'm going to start with an armor and I'm going to choose leather because that is, I believe, oh, I keep forgetting that Tasha's introduces a whole pile of different kinds of armor. So this is light armor. So I'm going to grab that and put that into place. Now, simple weapons. Well, that one is going to be something like a short sword or a short bow. And you can see that, okay, a short sword is going to be martial, but a short bow will definitely work here. So I'm going to give them a bow. Maybe we'll make this a ranged character, and that will tie in with the dexterity. They do need, however, a close-up melee weapon. Let's see, is a mace? Simple melee. So let's go with a mace just as a backup in case they have chosen or have to drop their bow and get into melee. There are two tools of our choice. And then that would be the equipment there. And then what we can do is take a look at setting up the starting equipment here. So, tools. Let's see. Tools are a little bit trickier to get to. So what I like to do is I like to open up a class, and I'm not sure why that's expanded out. There we go. Um, I like to open up a class from the player's handbook. And the reason why I do that is because you gain easy access to the equipment tables here. I still find that, just let me shrink this up a bit, that trying to find equipment here is a bit clunky, even though the filter option is there. You don't necessarily always remember what is a tool, and we're looking for tool choice two tools of your choice. Well, we're first going to acquire the cook's utensils because we're starting with that. I'm going to go with... Hmm, that would be artisan tools. Oh, yeah, we also picked a loot, didn't we? Yeah, so I'll give you that. And uh, let's go with carpenter's tools. Yeah, let's go with Tinker's Tools. Okay. So that sets everything up for that. So we'll have to make sure that we set up those proficiencies once we actually get everything over there. Close that. Okay, now let's take a look at this. So let's go with a staff. Trap. trophy which you won't find here by the way so if you look for one it just simply won't exist so we'll ignore that for now uh traveler's clothes so these would be traveler's clothes and a pouch oops not punch pouch all right and that takes care of that now, this character does not gain any spells, so we don't need to worry about that. And that completes our inventory selection. And for now, that pretty much sets everything up we need to do to create the initial character sheet. So I'm going to call this the expert. Oops, ERT. And let's see if we actually run into a problem when we go through and try to create this character sheet. Excellent. It has worked, but it has kindly 
prompted us to select the actual skills, and I'm happy it did that because I was hoping it would. So we are gaining athletics and survival through that. Well, let's see. I'm going to go with stealth. Perception. That's two. And you'll notice we don't have a check mark here yet. Acrobatics. Animal handling and I think possibly arcana. No, I'll go with insight. No, I'll go with nature. Makes more sense. Yeah, okay. And now we have the check mark, so we can now select that, and our skills have now been set up as proficient. We also gained our athletics proficiency, which didn't get applied for some reason, as well as a survival proficiency, so we got to make sure that we set that up. Finally, we need to make sure that we increase either our constitution or our wisdom. I am going to go with our wisdom, so that'll be a 16. And everything else we'll have to go through and configure in the Actions tab in relation to this, with the exception of our proficiency. So let's go to Abilities and add in our proficiencies. So we have Cook's Utensils. Utensils. Oops. We also had um, the Carpenter's Tool. Or Carpenter's, I think, is what we took. Carpenter's Tools. So let's add that. And the other thing that we took was the Tinker's Tools. So those are all the things that we are proficient in. The weapon that we have chosen, this is a category, so we don't need to worry about updating that. And everything else looks to have been set up correctly. Okay, skills. Our saving throws did not get set up. So, saving throws. One of your choice from dexterity, intelligence, or charisma. No, I'm going to go with dexterity. And do we gain anything here? No. Okay, so we only have one saving throw that we're proficient in. Okay, so that sets all we need to do up for the main tab, except for maybe a portrait here. So let's go with Tasha's. Where are you? There you are. Now, is there an expert? They have the warrior. They have the spellcaster. Why do they not have an expert? They just simply have a fighter. Okay. Well, if we look at the pictures, so we can have the turtle, that, or whatever the heck that is. I'm going to go with this guy, a Kenku. <laughs> it's not quite a Kenku, because this one is, well, I suppose it could be. It's custom lineage. It doesn't really matter. So yeah, Kenku would be fine. But needless to say, we've pretty much got everything done. Now, the one thing we did not acquire is a backpack. So most of this stuff here is probably going to be in some form of backpack or, or whatever to carry it with. We don't need to worry about that too much. We do need to worry about setting up the gold pieces here. Uh, electrum pieces, silver pieces, and copper pieces. And we got 10 gold pieces from that. So this character has 10 gold pieces. They're not overly encumbered. That's fine. So we can now close this. Let's leave this open because we're going to have to make use of that in the Actions tab. Okay, bonus proficiencies we need to go through and review as well as helpful. So these are our starting features. And these are the three things that we're going to want to check to see if we need to make any further adjustments within our actual character sheet. Um, there's nothing else that we get here. 
so we're okay. All right, so I'm going to start with this helpful feature, if you will. And what it gives the ability to do is actually allow the sidekick to help as a bonus action. So in case you aren't aware, you do have a number of actions as a player. And every character gets this. So I believe it is, let's just look for, uh, that might turn up quite a few here. Um, I'm looking for a very specific category here. Maybe action. Let's look for actions. All right, actions in combat. Here we go. This is what I'm looking for. So you have the ability to attack, cast a spell, dash, which means that you're going to move, double your current movement. You can disengage, you can dodge, and you can help. And help lends, allows you to lend assistance to another creature in the completion of their action or task. And essentially what you're going to be doing is giving someone advantage to a particular die roll. And that's what this is going to be doing. So let's go through and add this as an action. So it's going to be helpful. And this is going to be part of their expert grouping. And does it say what their primary stat is? No. OK. So. These kinds of characters don't necessarily get a, a quote-unquote primary stat. So I'm going to not worry about setting up the actual group here, if you will. And I forgot to grab ammo, so let's do that after. What I do want to do, though, is add a new effect here. And what that effect is going to be set up to do is give someone an advantage on whatever their role happens to be. So I'm going to put a, the keyword helpful, which is the skill or the feature, a semicolon, and then I'm going to essentially grant them advantage on pretty much everything that someone could potentially gain advantage on. So it could be with a skill check. It could be with an attack. It could be with a particular saving throw. So let's do this. So ADV save, semicolon. ADV skill, oops, semicolon, and ADV ATK. And what this means is that any character you render this assistance on will have an advantage either in their saving throw, in their skill, or in their attack ability. And we want that to expire on next roll. And that We'll set that up. So give me a moment. I'm going to quickly set up the combat tracker so that we can see how this works. Now, you're going to see a little bit more detail because I'm obviously using the Dungeon Master's screen for this particular example. And I've added the expert to the party that I've already had in place when it came to my last bard uh, recording or bard demonstration video. So the expert is going to make use of their bonus action, and they're going to temporarily grant this bard, let's say, advantage on assistance. Now I'm going to remove that for now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this effect and drag it on top of the bard, and we'll see that this effect now comes into play. I am then going to open up that bard. All right, and let's just set that over there for now. And let's say, for example, it's now circled back around to their turn, and they haven't done anything just yet. They haven't required any saving throws. They haven't been required to make a skill check, but they are about to make their attack. And let's say that this particular bird is attempting to attack this particular dragon. And doing so, they're just going to make a, an attack with their rapier. Well, you'll see that it rolled two dice. You'll also see that the stat that was there is now gone, or the effect that was there is now gone. That means that this is working the way that we want it to. 
A, this is a green dice, and for anyone who can't see green, you will look for the keyword ADV here, or if it's red, you would look for DIS. That means advantage or disadvantage. And that means that when we attacked, we still missed, but we made the attack with an advantage roll because the expert rendered assistance to the bard during that attack. Excellent. That is the way that we want that to work. And that actually completes everything that we need to do for the helpful feature. So let's close that and take a look at this particular feature. Okay, with this particular quote unquote bonus proficiencies, we're actually not really gaining anything that we haven't already configured. We're gaining access to the proficiency for light armor. We are proficient with simple weapons. We have the ability to choose a proficient saving throw from dexterity, intelligence, or charisma, which we've already done and the ability to choose five skills, which we've already done. So all of this, all this really is, is a summary of what this particular um, portion of the class sheet, if you will, is actually setting up and displaying. So there's really nothing that we have to do when it comes to the bonus proficiencies, because we've already got them set. So we can just simply close this. Now I did take this chef feature. And this chef feature does have a couple of Benefits, if you will. Oops, I don't want to actually shrink that that far. There we go. We've already taken care of the increase in the Constitution or the Wisdom score. We increased our Wisdom. We have already set up the proficiency with the Cook's Utensils. We have not dealt with anything around this portion of the Short Rest or this portion of the Long Rest. And we might want to break these up into two things. So I'm going to drag this into place and set this up as the feet. And I'm going to... Just hit tab so that it goes somewhere else so that it sorts that out. I'm now going to add a new feature. And it is going to be an effect. Actually, no. This is going to be a heal. So I'm going to delete that and add in a new heal. That's what this is going to be. So as part of a short rest, you can cook special food provide, provided you have the ingredients and the cook's utensils on hand. You can prepare enough food for this number of creatures equal to four plus your proficiency bonus, which is two by starting. So our starting proficiency is two points, which means we can do this for six characters. At the end of the short rest, any creature who eats the food and spends one or more hit die to regain hit points will regain an extra 1d8 of hit points. Okay, so we need to add target, hit points. We need to add a new item here and drag in a 1d8. Now we're done. Excuse me. And what this will allow us to do, and I'm going to pop this back open again. Let's say that we're executing a short rest. The bard is taking damage, even though it hasn't really done so here. In fact, I can actually set it up so that it has. So let's say it's taken 56 points of damage. Then what we can do is this bard could make use of a hit die. So let's open up that bard again. Oops. The search thing in this is actually very, very case sensitive. So be careful when you're trying that. And on their main tab, they have a hit die. So let's say that this level 20 character which is kind of funny that they're hanging around with a level one sidekick. But anyway, um, decides to roll one hit die. Well, we can preload this heal, if you will. Actually, we could set this up as an effect. Let me get rid of that. And that way, when they roll and actually decide to make use of this, it will be there and ready to you for use. So what we would do is chef cooked meal semicolon, heal, colon, 1d8. It'll be on target, and it will be on next roll. So, someone has indicated to you that they're going to be going through and executing their hit die, and they did eat the meal that you gave them. Well, now, they can roll that, and you will see um, that it didn't do anything, which is unfortunate. So sadly, this actually will not work when you're rolling hit die. For some reason, there is no trigger that kicks off additional rolls when you actually make use of a hit die. 
It just will simply roll that one hit die. That is unfortunate. So we can't use an effect. I am sad. What we can do is go back to the heal, and this will require you to be more involved in the actual healing role, if you will, in the sense that when they actually go through and eat their food, you would target anyone who has eaten the food. So let's say you, and let's say this ape is one of them as well, then you would actually execute the role there, and they would both acquire an X number of hit points. So that's how that would work in this particular case. You unfortunately cannot use an effect. As I said, I'm doing this without preloading any of the information so that you can see the issues that I'm going to run into when I go through and do this. That way you don't have to worry about them. <laughs> but that does set up this particular side of the uh, ability here. So the next thing that we want to be able to do is add this temporary hit points if you've cooked a treat and they decide to eat that treat during as a bonus action for their um for their actual combat scenario a creature can use this bonus action to eat one of those treats to gain temporary hit points equal to your proficiency bonus okay so let's set up a new heal let's see if this will work heal it will be temporary hit points. We want a new heal based on, is there a P? Yes, there is. Okay. So if you didn't see that, after charisma is proficiency. And what this means is that they will gain two temporary hit points. And it's on a target. Okay. So now let's say that the bard has decided to eat. Uh, let's go with the ape because they have temporary hit points and you'll see what happens when someone has temporary hit points already in place. Let's say they decided to eat this treat that you cooked. Well, you can drag that right on top of the ape and you will see that two temporary hit points were applied to the ape, but they didn't gain anything. That's because they already had temporary hit points higher than the temporary hit points that you gave them. Let's get rid of this so that this particular character doesn't have any damage. Now if I drag over the temporary hit points, you will see that they will gain two hit points. So temporary hit points will only work if they don't already have temporary hit points in place. So just wanted to demonstrate that particular side of it. But that actually goes through and sets up this particular aspect of it. And we don't have to worry about anything else around the chef. So we're done. We can close everything off. And uh, essentially, this creature is pretty much ready to go. As you can see, creating a sidekick is not an overly complicated process, and it's not really any different, minus a few little adjustments, than creating a normal character. I have not, as of yet, gone through the process of leveling this particular character up. I'm going to do that in the next video so that you can see how that works. As well as attempt to try to keep some of these videos shorter than they have been in the past. <laughs> With that, I hope you found this video was informative and useful to you, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thank you. I wish to thank you for taking the time to watch this particular video. I hope you found it informative and useful to familiarizing yourself with Fantasy Grounds in general, and that you had fun in the process. If you found the video useful and you liked the content of the particular video, go ahead and click that like button to let me know. And if you have any questions specific to the topic covered by this particular video, or just have some comments in general, please feel free to post something in the comments section. I will do my best to respond to any questions that are asked. Additionally, I do release content quite regularly, and it's generally specific to Fantasy Grounds or 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons at this time. So if you'd like to be notified when new videos come out, go ahead and subscribe and click the notification bell to ensure that notification is sent to you when I release a new video.